Hey, it's Mitch doing the cruise February 22nd, 1989. The very unheavy Jethro Tull wins the first Grammy for Best Hard Rock Metal Performance, beating out Metallica with the album Crest of a Knave. Now, the Grammys aren't known to embrace new forms of music, so it isn't until 1989 that they recognize heavy metal for the first time, finally acknowledging the headbangers that have been filling stadiums throughout the decade, ignoring releases by Judas Priest, Anthrax, Guns N' Roses, Megadeth, Slayer, and Pantera. Nominations go to Jane's Addiction, Iggy Pop, Jethro Tull, ACDC, and Metallica, the last two, the only bands that really qualify as metal. And Metallica, nominated for their landmark album and Justice for All, is the clear choice. But the winner is Jethro Tull, a truly baffling choice. The band skips the ceremony, so presenters Lita Ford and Alice Cooper accept on their behalf. Tull's record company places an ad in Billboard to congratulate them, pointing out that the flute, often a lead instrument in their songs, is indeed made of heavy metal. The following year, more suitable acts are nominated. Dokken, Queensryche, and Metallica wins. At that ceremony, Millie Vanilli wins the Best New Artist, an award they would have to give back when news spreads they didn't even sing on their album. When it comes to rap, the Grammys face similar growing pains. 1989 is also the first year they give an award in that category, which goes to DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince for parents just don't understand. Run DMC, Public Enemy, NWA, and Eric B., as well as Ratkin, all eligible, aren't even nominated.